Thanks for staying with us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. And we've invited the publisher, CK News, Mr. Chris Wanju. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Let's begin this morning with the Daily Independence newspaper. The headline reads, Nigeria's ports, poor infrastructure, clearing processes, hurt trade facilitation. Above the headline, Nigeria leads Africa, ranks third in global crypto trading. Nigeria at war, and that's according to Bajabi Amila, calls for more funding for armed forces. Below the headline on the Daily Independence, gunmen raise another police station in Abia State, kill two cops. Police probes five, police probes fire incidents at INEC headquarters in Enugu, 2023. Oshimbajo denies nursing presidential ambition. Kaduna government says, despite NLC strike, it will right size its workers. Lai Mohammed here saying we've uncovered 476 online sites set up to fight federal government. Insecurity PDP governors call for devolution of more powers to states, insist on restructuring, ranching, equity for all sections, ask Buhari to summon meeting of Nigeria Police Council. Inflation rates fell by 0.05% in April. EFCC grills ex quara governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed. And we see a picture here on the front page of the Daily Independent of uh, PDP uh, governors here at that meeting in Ohio State. And those are the stories uh, on the Daily Independent newspaper. And now on the Punch newspapers this morning, uh, INEC meets security chiefs as burnt offices rise to 21. Meeting with uh, security agencies holds after Wednesday's parley with uh, resident electoral commissioners. Also, 2023 budget may rise. Commission plans to replace attacked facilities. Elrify alleges sabotage as NLC strike grounds Kaduna. Also this morning, Yoruba Nation, Southwest Governors, Bajabi Amila, others meet Tinubu on Sunday. A 31-year-old mechanic faces prosecution for alleged uh, defilement of uh, an 11-year-old girl. And also inflation drops marginally. Experts counsel federal government on security. Still this morning, um, cannabis will aid our industrial drive and boost IGR, rep spokesman says. Uh, the vice president, Professor Yemi Shimbajo, disowns group pushing alleged 2023 presidential agenda. And uh, also our contest Oshun PDP governor uh, governorship uh, ticket in 2022, says Ogumbi. Um, I think, uh, well, Jusun strike stalls Mena, Deziani, Wadume, others trial. PDP governors back southern counterparts, demand state police and restructuring. And also acquire ex-governor Ahmed faces EFCC interrogations on alleged 9 billion naira scam. Some foreigners don't need an iron for SIM registration, says the NCC. Those are the big stories on the Punch newspapers this morning. On the Nation newspaper, the headline reads, Lawans anti restructuring outburst upsets senators. Angry lawmakers to challenge Senate president and executive session holds today. Above the headline on the Nation newspaper, EFCC detains ex Quara governor over 9 billion naira probe. 17 killed in rivers, Delta, Abia, Plateau, Benue attacks. Inflation down to 18.12%. Six vehicles burnt as gunmen attack Enugu Ainek office. Buhari extols Okala at 70. Governors seeking state police restructuring now 23. PDP Hems men call for power devolution bill. ACF endorses ban on open grazing. Labor shuts down Kaduna. Aviation, rail workers join strike. El Rufai says it's sabotage. Governors caution NLC and IGP deploys a special team. Also on the nation newspaper, tenure extension for UIVC minister. Anti-government, 476 online sites running. Below the headline on the Nation newspaper, $2 billion needed yearly to kit armed forces, says Defense Headquarters. Also on the Nation newspaper, robbery suspect held. All right. And now to the Nigerian Tribune. PDP governors to Buhari send bill to National Assembly for power devolution now. 
bank restructuring, and ranching to end clashes. 36 governors meet tomorrow over controversial Executive Order 10 and others. Nigeria accounts for 75% of crime in the Gulf of Guinea, says the uh, federal government. And police stations set ablaze in Abia and Ek office in Enugu attacked. Lekki Deep Sea Port, Lagos secures $629 million loan to fund project. And also long work hours increase death risk from heart disease and stroke, says the WHO. We can also see here Kaduna Labor, in Kaduna State, rather, Labor shuts banks, schools, airports, train stations and government offices. No retreat, no surrender, NLC president declares. Also, federal government has uncovered 476 online sites set up to fight government, says uh, Lai Mohammed. Inflation rate dropped to 18.12% in April, says the NBS. And uh, Afeni Ferris slams Senate president for opposing restructuring. Ahmed, ex Quara governor in EFCC, net over 9 billion naira diversion. And also, only 9% of armed forces' budget is spent on equipment, says Bajabia Miller. Lastly, ACF supports ban on open grazing, six amendments to Article 3 of ECOWAS protocol. Those are the big ones we have on the um, Nigerian Tribune this morning. Uh, also, on, um, lastly, on the Guardian newspaper, still the stories of seen, you know, on other papers, PDP governors calling for state police, you know, ranching and restructuring. The story also in Kaduna, NLC vows to bring the, the state government to its knees. Also, can cautions Nigeria against fighting Israel. FG recovers $1 billion, links bulk of graft cases to fictitious firms. Senate panel accuses Lottery Fund Trust of $7 billion fund or fraud. Herders kill four persons, abduct one in Benue, Dangote to bridge supply gap with 4.5 MTPA expanded capacity. Mr. Awandu, thanks for still being here. We've uh, taken a look at the headlines in some newspapers. And we see that uh, the PDP meeting that they had in Oyo State uh, yesterday is, you know, generating a buzz with, uh, you know, the, the insistence for a devolution of power restructuring in the country and the fact that it took a stand with the 17 southern governors who had met last Tuesday. Um, of course, the APC has responded to this, basically saying it was disappointed with the PDP meeting and uh, all the insults and name calling. Um, your thoughts on this, please? Well, the, um, the outcome um, of the meeting of the PDP governors in New York State um, follows the pattern of the, um, the recession of the 17 governors of um, southern Nigeria um, last week uh, in Nasaba. And um, the resolution that they came out uh, practically was intended with um, what the PDP governors also came out yesterday. Um, part of uh, those uh, re 10 resolution was uh, raised by the state governors directly or the same thing that the PDP governors uh, um, came up with. Um, so um, that, that is not much, uh, not in, in what they said. And they can be better reinforced instead of that years. Uh, evolution of power, the need for policing, the issue of security and lights. So um, don't forget that the thing of last week uh, by the southern governors who were partisan. It has both the APC and the PDP governors, the last that of Abga in attendance, and um, all of them uh, endorsed that Nikkei. So um, that's more of a the, the only change um, in what happened in you know, is that. Now, you also have PD governors from north. So what you're having is a situation where, if you put into context the outcome of that meeting, is every, almost every governor from all parts, uh, all sections of the country um, moving together. Um, there are uh, the PDP governors that get, have governors from, um, from school states, from Bauchi states, and some other states in the in the north in attendance, and then that. So uh, it can only be, I tell you that um, everybody seems to be on the same plate, or on the same page on this, on the way forward. And um, but uh, talking about the reaction, I don't want to go into that um, because you expect people political parties will always make statements, even if it doesn't make sense. 
just want to talk. And, um, that's just it for me. But, um, the issues are still, and um, the, some of the issues that are very, very germane. In taking into consideration, uh, maybe we get us out of the current situation and ourselves. All right. Um, let's, um, we we'll probably will come back to this. It appears in all the papers this morning. But let's go to Kaduna now and, uh, you know, share your thoughts on the NLC uh, five-day warning strike and, of course, the events from yesterday. Yes. Um, the warning strike um, by NLC in Kaduna, um, especially very important to respect to uh, when the state got I to just um, this means about 4,000 to 5,000 works. Um, I've always seen um, Air is a very, very uh, intelligent sound and um, very coherent um, governor uh, in most of the things he does or says. Um, he, he knows his nuance and he uh, made the shoot pitches. And um, we cannot force uh, uh, workers on, uh, on an employer. But the problem I have with him is that lack of empathy. That is what is lacking, uh, Asela. There are certain decisions that you take, and you take certain things into consideration, not because um, it is uh, exigently uh, uh, correct or that in the sense of it is right, but at times you take certain things into consideration. And that is part of what he is doing he has to do with the insecurity. Yeah, he say, oh, I'm not going to talk to bandits. I'm not going to do this letter. If I have opportunity, I'll go and live this and keep the things and rest of them. That not the mark of a, a lead. Yes, he said that probably 80% of the uh, of the right. revenue of the state is being used as salaries and monuments of um, silver and rest of them. He leaves the state later on not to tackle issues. I agree with him. But I think there's still much better way to handle the situation rather than the way he went about it. They did discuss with NLC and TUC and other organizations to arrive at a reasonable um, stand on issues like this. Mm -hmm. Well, he called the above, but they're also showing him that, yes, you may be the government, but also we are the speakers and the um, representative of the workers. And yesterday, um, Kaduna said practically paralyzed this airport, the train station. Don't forget, um, most of the movement from Abuja to Kaduna now in the train because of the level of insecurity between Kaduna and uh, Abuja Express. So if that uh, train station is short, people are exposed to a lot of insecurity on that. So apart from what that, I think that a good sense prevails. Yes, the NS also understand that we are having a dwindling economy that most of these are rather struggling to survive. But that does not take away the need for the state government also show level of empathy. By the time you have about 5,000 people into the labor markets like that, for every worker you dismiss, I tell you that you have about four dependents on them surviving too. So those things should be the highest level of empathy on the part of the governor, rather than just the way he just threw away the baby with that water. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is how it goes between now. And the next few days, what um, can happen? Mr. Mr. I wonder, I don't, I don't know who will shift ground here because NLC has insisted that they will carry on with their strike, one in strike for the next five days, and then escalate this if the government does nothing. But yesterday, Erufai tweeted that this was a sponsored campaign to sabotage his government and that he would not shift grounds, you know, saying that he's not going to uh, be altered. The right sizing of the state's civil service will not be altered by the N NLC's campaign of economic and social sabotage. And, you know, like I already said, trains, power, you know, everything granted to a halt right now in Kaduna State. So we'll just uh, wait and see um, how it turns out in Kaduna State. Um, moving on now, you know, I need to ask how safe it is, you know, to, you know, prepare for the elections that we're expecting in 2023. And that's because we continue to see INEC offices being burnt in the country and police offices at police stations as well. Uh, the Daily Independent says, gunmen raise another police station in Abia, kills two core. Also, another INEC office in Enugu State, six vehicles also burnt as gunmen attack Enugu office in uh, Enugu INEC office. Um, what, what do you think about these, um, this uh, you know, spate of arson in the country? Yeah, from what we are learning, that's count uh, 21. My neck offices have been um, burned or destroyed. 
especially within the south, um, southeast area. And um, the rate, as coupled with that of the police, the rate as we are going, we might find out that in 2023, we may find ourselves in a situation that the worst it is than we had in 2015. Don't forget that the 2015 general election uh, uh, postponed at a point because of insecurity. We had the former president to ask that it be given some few weeks to be able to sort out the issues in the northeast. And um, the election was postponed uh, for some way, for days or week. And um, before we could be able to get um, INEC to conduct election in some parts of um, um, not especially those that were, the local elements were recovered in Ponu State. But at the rate which we are going now, the level of insecurity is on the on the high, is topmost. And that to me is going to be a serious challenge for INEC to come to it. The 2023 uh, election, it already has what that then have is of the square. And that's of the area. Don't come out of it. And we are trying to see, and it is doing, seems to do it to move to people to come to vote in 2023. At the rate we are going, we may have six studies on that. Not only not now, the south, south, and the south, east, the south, west, the north, the north. And, and every other part of um, that to me is a very big value. Why we need to do this in the, the attack is because the police are not even good. Um, that to me is a big challenge. <laughs> it's the police don't even protect the police station. That to me, and they are the ones that have to protect the pol uh, police during uh, election. It is the job of the army or the um, navy or the air force. It is the job of the police. Well, we're having a bit of a challenge hearing you clearly, Mr. Wandu. If you could please hold on for a minute. Uh, we're having a bit of a challenge hearing you. But um, quickly before we wrap up, we know um, a story that uh, Shimbajo is basically saying here that the federal government has uncovered 476 online publications that are churning out fake news, you know, to fight the government ahead of the, uh, you know, election. We know that Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said this, you know, in Abuja yesterday, saying that they're tracing this basically to, you know, saying that the president, President Mohammed Buhari's mental status is unbalanced, basically. Um, what do you think about about it? We know that when it, when it's uh, close to election period, we begin to see things like this fake news coming up here and there. But for 476 that have been discovered, you know, at this time, Mr. Wandu. Sorry, I didn't hear you well. Get back from your from your end, very very bad. Okay, can I don't you hear know where it's from. So, is the feedback is very very bad? So I don't know what I'm talking about. Can you hear so me now, Mr. Wandu? To check, your, check the network within your end. I didn't hear you very well. So, maybe you need to. Well, uh, we're also struggling with, uh, you know, getting to hear uh -huh. you also this morning. Uh, can you hear anything that we're saying clearly? All right, I think we may have lost him. That's a poor network this morning, maybe mm -hmm. because of the weather, I'm not sure. Or uh, there's uh, elements trying to sabotage uh, our program. Yeah. Well. <laughs> and talking mm -hmm. about the story, I, I really want to know where the source is, because the story here, you know, this is like Mohammed speaking, that the 476 fake sites that are turning mm. false information about the president saying President Buhari is mentally unstable and that he can mentally hardly... Mentally unstable, but... Um, what did you just say? <laughs> you, you, the president is not mentally... Is that, is that what is used there? Mentally unstable? Mentally unstable. That's the word that Lai Mohammed said. No. Mentally okay. unstable. Or ment he's, he's talking about his mental status. Yeah. And that the president can barely recognize his own family members. You know, so they're basically saying they wonder how people... Yes, this, that's, go, to, go online. This, that's the story. There. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Lai Mohammed is saying those are t some of the stories. No, those that, are not my words. No, no, I'm yes. saying... Okay, that, those are the type... Okay, I'm talking, yes. I thought you meant Lai Mohammed said... Yes, Lai Mohammed... Is. No, Lai Mohammed said these are the stories <laughs> they're seeing online. Do you understand? Oh, Lai Mohammed... You. See, this is a quote by Lai Mohammed. He said... The latest which I found ridiculous is one which said days ago that he had information that when President Muhammad Buhari was in the UK last time, he was advised to step down because he could not even recognize members of his own family. And that I wonder why people will go so far, you know, and, um, to, you know, to make the fake news go viral. So this is, I, this is the first time I am seeing or encountering news like this. As I'm saying, I wonder where, what their sources are because I haven't seen any of this fake news online. And I'm online. Well, I, mean, you would see. I haven't seen... 
I'm talking sure about I'm, his I'm mental sure have, status uh, and I've come across uh, stuff like that uh, mm. uh, mostly on Twitter there's people who you know have said you know that the president is you know health wise even obviously at some point you know had said that the president needs to go for a check or should do a, I remember she said that um, but there's also people who once in a while will tweet stuff like that you know but it's not stuff that should you know that we must take uh, um, seriously or you know we should stop the country from moving forward um, there's always going to be some of all these you know things on the side there's always going to be people fake who news should be taken seriously own. if it's yeah fake but it's news, not it's we know not how that affects yeah but i think we we also country. should th that's why you know it's not left for us to be able to discern the source of our information exactly what i you said know? so yes. if you if you if you see a reputable or supposedly reputable uh, media organization putting out stories like that, you know, and maybe you should. But if it's just some random name from some part of the country, some random person that you nobody knows who the person is, then those type of things we should be smart enough to say. Oh, please yes, arrest. yes, guys, do your due diligence. Yeah, if you absolutely. see any information online, you need to actually ask yourself what's the source of this information. Is this a reputable um, media name, a media brand? If it's not, even even sometimes when these are reputable media brands, you still have to ask yourself questions as to the authenticity of the information. Yeah you read online, uh, especially on platforms like Twitter, Facebook, those and, platforms and when really they, are, you know, breeding grounds, so to speak. And when they are proven uh, to be false, you know, a lot of times those um, 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 media outfits, you know, would retract and apologize mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. But it's not every random tweet, you know, that Lai Mohammed should be taken seriously. Anybody can tweet anything whatsoever, as long as, you know, it is not, you know, threatening. The fact they're know, saying the they're online anything. sites Ugh. here. 476 is even poor. You know, there should be more if we're being serious. It's oh, a wow. 200 million, um, um, 200 million uh, population. There should be more people who are, you know, social media active. Yeah, and so you should expect <laughs> in 200 million people that there should be you know, more than 400, more you know, mm. people who, who are tweeting fake fake stories. Mm. There's so much of it, you know, in, in the country these days. And once again, all those things shouldn't be issues. It shouldn't distract um, the government from moving forward. Those, you know, may, I'm just seeing all those things as, you know, excuses, um, you know, every now and then that people use for... Yes, anyway. in addition to all the challenges anyway. that you inherited from the... Yeah. From we'll, we'll go on a short break. When we come back, we'll let you know what happened today in history. It's the 18th of May, and I'm going back to the year 2012. We'll be right back.